Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Brett Cast. We have a ton of school closings coming into our newsroom. You can see them scrolling across the bottom of your screen and we'll have that running all show long. And of course, they're also listed on our website, upnorthlive.com. But for a look at that forecast to see when things uh, may slow down, hopefully we get some relief later on. We'll turn it over now to Storm Team Meteorologist Blake Hansen to tell us what's going on out there. Yeah, hey there, Brett, and that's the main question. Uh, when will we finally see some relief for all of us across northern Michigan? I think a good amount of us see some relief starting tomorrow. However, that won't be the case for everyone. Every, at least everyone might have to wait until Tuesday until we finally see full relief. But live look over the Mackinac Bridge. Our camera uh, took a beating over the uh, last few hours, and that's an understatement. Uh, visibility was near zero for several hours from about our 6 o'clock show uh, throughout the rest of the daylight period. Uh, we're starting to see some improvement, at least right now, with uh, some drying across northern Michigan. Uh, there has been some freezing drizzle. Uh, we ran into that in Traverse City, uh, right outside our station. Uh, some freezing drizzle accumulated on the uh, cars. Uh, the windows were had a nice uh, coating of ice, that's for sure. But as we zoom in across the Upper Peninsula, Still the eastern half, Chippewa, Mackinac County, even part of the 23 corridor stretching from Roger City to Alpena getting in on the snow action. Uh, visibility low in spots along with temperatures still below freezing almost everywhere. Mount Pleasant the only spot uh, at 33 degrees, so above the freezing mark. So icy, our icy roads are still going to be a problem. Winds out of the northeast starting to wind down. I'm a little concerned tomorrow morning that we'll see some wraparound moisture leading to heavy snow, at least for the northern half of our viewing area. We'll talk about that. And yes, that relief in sight in the extended forecast in about 15 minutes. Thanks, Blake. Let's take another look, though, at that live uh, image of Mackin the Mackinac Bridge. It's back open now to all traffic with high profile vehicles now being escorted across. The bridge had closed earlier this morning, but opened back up around 9 p.m. Winds, though, are still blowing. You can see the camera shaking. Winds are still blowing around 40 miles per hour. So the bridge authority is still asking drivers to keep speeds down to 20 miles per hour. Now below the water, line five has been temporarily shut down. A spokesperson from Embridge tells us the closure is due to a power outage at the Embridge terminal in Superior, Wisconsin. The line will be shut down until weather conditions improve in the Straits. And with this storm, many areas of northern Michigan saw more than a foot of snowfall today. Boyne City seemed to have the most with about 17 inches in some areas. While downtown Boyne City didn't get quite that much, some people further outside town say they got closer to 20 inches. Most people were staying indoors to avoid bad road conditions, but others still had work to do. Out at my house, I had over 20 inches and around Boyne City here, there was good 12 to 15 pretty much everywhere I went. So. Wow. William Knott says this is the second time this month he has had to put his plow back onto his truck. Heavy winds today made matters worse, blowing more snow onto the roads and making it more difficult to see. The weather has taken its toll on roads around the region this weekend. Staff of the Grand Traverse County Road Commission said they have their team on 24 hour shifts to combat the storm. The Road Commission has been busy not only plowing the streets, but also removing fallen trees. They said they're attempting to get to main streets first before continuing to neighborhoods. And check out this video from Saginaw County. You can see water crashing against the shore. There was also serious flooding in Bay County, specifically in Bangor Township, where the fire department was forced to swing into action. First responders went door to door to help people get out of the water's way. And snow is also hitting hard across Lake Michigan in Wisconsin. Portions of the state have seen more than two feet of snow causing major damage. Authorities have been kept busy responding to roofs caving in, in the last 48 hours, like that collapse of a carport and a partial collapse of this roof of this hotel. Obviously, with the high um, amount of snow we have, but with the, the, the rain that we've had before, it's adding all the load onto the roof lines, especially with the frozen water that's up there. And it's causing these ca catastrophic um, failures of, of the systems. The city of Green Bay has already seen more than 30 inches of snow this month, making it the snowiest April on record. And next door in Minnesota, multiple counties are under a blizzard warning until 7 a.m. Monday. There will be winds over 35 miles per hour and low visibility. Travel is expected to be impossible in the Duluth area, and there is a chance of more snow showers Monday morning in that area. 
And the wicked weather uh, this weekend wasn't just snow. Check out this video of a tornado spotted in Greensboro, North Carolina on Sunday. A Greensboro city, a city spokesperson said one person was killed as a result of the weather, but the circumstances were not immediately known. The severe weather knocked down trees and blew off rooftops. There were also confirmed tornadoes in Danville and Chatham, uh, Chatham uh, further north near the North Carolina-Virginia border. And plenty of flights coming in and out of Cherry Capital Airport have been canceled so far. The flights earlier today uh, arriving and leaving, they've all been canceled. There are still some flights scheduled for later tomorrow that have not yet been delayed. Looking ahead, a big construction project that was supposed to begin tomorrow has now been pushed back until Tuesday. The multi-million dollar reconstruction project will be along South Airport Road from Veterans Drive to US 31 and will condense traffic to one lane in both directions. The initial goal was to have the project completed by June 29th. And the White House is warning Syrian President Assad tonight that the ball is in his court. Don't use chemical weapons again on his people or face more military action from the United States. White House officials clarified President Trump's tweet of a mission accomplished, saying he was only talking about Friday night's successful strikes. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has the story from Washington. Despite targeted military airstrikes on Syria's chemical weapon sites, the White House is concerned Syrian President Assad still has and may use weapons of mass destruction again and is warning Assad to be on guard. We know that it is now up to Bashar al-Assad on whether he's going to use chemical weapons again. And should he use it again, the president has made it very clear that the United States is locked and loaded and ready to go. The White House says President Trump's tweet of mission accomplished was referring only to Friday night's coordinated action by the U.S., Britain and France, which destroyed three different research, production and storage sites. They also sent a strong message to Syria, to Russia, to Iran, that when this president has a red line, he will enforce it. Assad met with Russian lawmakers today, calling the strikes an act of aggression. Russia is helping Assad fight militants opposed to his rule. Now some members of Congress say President Trump needs to consult with them if there's further military action. We need to have these discussions because we don't see that Bashir al-Assad will all of a sudden become a real nice guy. Both Syria and Russia have dismissed reports of the gas attack as bogus. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. Protests up erupted outside of the Philadelphia Starbucks where two African-American men were arrested last week for allegedly refusing to leave. A video posted on social media shows the two men being handcuffed and escorted outside the coffee shop Thursday. The men claimed they were waiting for a friend. The Philadelphia Police Commissioner says employees called 911 to say the men were trespassing after they had not ordered anything. A regional manager for Starbucks said the company will be sure to make it right. This incident does not reflect the spirit of our brand. It was an unfortunate incident and we'll be sure to make it right. In a statement released Saturday night, Starbucks CEO Kevin Johnson called the situation disheartening and that it was wrong for the store to call police. Former First Lady Barbara Bush is in failing health. That is according to a statement released by former President George H.W. Bush's spokesman Jim McGrath. In the statement, McGrath says the 92-year-old would instead focus on comfort care after consulting with doctors and family members. It wasn't immediately clear what Bush had been hospitalized for. The statement goes on to say Bush is surrounded by a family she adores. On this date five years ago, two bombs exploded near the finish line of the Boston Marathon. Today, the city paused to remember the victims of the bombings as prepares for this year's race. NBC's Dan Sheneman has the story. Five years after bombs exploded near the finish line of the Boston Marathon, families of victims laid wreaths at the site of the blast. The bombings claimed three lives and forever changed many more. These years have been full and, and filled with hard work and the hard work of healing. At 2.49, the moment the first bomb exploded, the city observed a moment of silence. And the bell rang at the Old South Church. Security at the marathon was heightened after the bombings, and police say they are ready for tomorrow's race. We don't want to get complacent after what happened five years ago, and that's something we continually stress. On the eve of the 2018 marathon, the mayor believes the tragedy has united the city. We've reclaimed the finish line, and Boston has emerged with a new strength, a resilience rooted in love. 
Five years after the bombings, Boston is strong. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. Of course, for the latest stories, sports and the weather and school closings too, you can log on to our website, upnorthlive.com. Well, still ahead on 7 to 4 News at 11, the weather did not keep everyone at, uh, at home. Nearly 100 people for the ninth annual Chocolate Festival in Traverse City. Um, we'll take you there after the break.